thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folare. Um, well, this morning, um, you know, you know, the season we're in is the political season, and first of all, I guess uh, most uh, well wishers, you know, are very happy that uh, the president elect Ashwajibala Ahmed Tinubu arrived town yesterday, and um, well, uh, one of our regulars. Uh, 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 Reverend Dominic, who had asked the other time where exactly the president-elect will be landing. Well, he got his answer uh, because Tinumbu was at his uh, Asokoro home yesterday. Indeed, barely 24 hours before landing, it was, it was down to business. Uh, he actually met with, a national working, with the National Working Committee of APC, led by its chairman, uh, Abdullahi Adamo. And um, the, there's, there's a connection between that and our subject matter today because the meeting, which was of the uh, National Working Committee of APC, uh, it also, it, it, at the president elect home, it was principally to begin, I think, consultations on key offices that are now front and center, talking about the Senate president, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, their deputies, and other key speakers. As you know by now, of course, quite a number of people are laying claim from just about all the regions. In that sense, we will be talking this morning with an august uh, guest, the governor of Ebony State and APC senatorial, uh, APC senator-elect for the Ebony South Senatorial District, Governor David Umahi. A fine morning to you, Mr. Governor. Thank you, and good morning to you, and good morning to our viewers. Indeed. Well, uh, first of all, uh, any, any word at all about um, you, uh, your leader, your national leader, uh, the president-elect, arriving town yesterday? Ah, yes. Uh, we're very grateful to God um, for Johnny Macy's. Uh, while he was there, I was uh, in Israel, the Holy Land, and, um, you know, I spoke with him. And uh, I was very excited that uh, it's, uh, you know, very strong and very much determined to do the assignment that God gave to him. I also spoke with uh, Excellency, the wife. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Very excited is back home. Exactly. Well, okay. Now, to cut to the chase, because I imagine there's uh, much, there's so much that we could talk about. First of all, your beloved Airborne State, uh, ongoing uh, de developmental work ongoing there. But I thought we'd come to, um, you know, what must be uppermost on your, I don't know if it's uppermost on your mind, because you're still fully in charge and still working in Airborne. But I'm talking here uh, as of uh, consequences of your being successful in the senatorial race, uh, but beyond that, I have it on reliable authority that you are not adverse to any senior uh, position in the National Assembly, never mind your being, you know, a, a rookie senator, as they speak. But rookie or not, still a distinguished senator. Well, uh, as you know, I'm contesting for uh, the leadership of, uh, you know, the Senate, the 10th Senate, uh, the presidency of, uh, you know, of uh, the 10th Senate. Mm. Uh, and, um, you know, that is what the position is. And uh, I've made it very clear uh, that the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and of course the Senate, you know, uh, uh, policies, you know, allow me to, you know, contest. But, you know, uh, the leader of uh, uh, the the, the the, the, the president-elect, the vice president-elect, the chairman of our party, the working committee of our party, they must take uh, sit together and take decision. And so for me, it's not do or die affair because I believe that everyone runs the destiny of his or her life. Uh, but uh, you must indicate interest. And I feel very strongly that I'm qualified to lead uh, the... 10 Senate, and that's why I'm in the race. Aha, uh -huh. but as you just said, um, this is going to be a, a collective uh, decision of the party, I imagine. It'll be up to the senators when, when you're sworn in, you people will actually, the ball will be squirreling your court and you will actually, quote unquote, do the deed. Um, but 
consultation is going on right now, and all sorts of uh, rationales for uh, being chosen are being heard. Uh, first of all, we hear about what everybody has brought to the table, and you, you know all the, we've heard about rankings, uh, there are arguments for and against rankings. You've just indicated that the uh, Constitution prevents, um, uh, enables everybody who is duly elected to contest for that office. Um, but in terms, when you said you're interested, might, might I inquire um, what it is that you would be bringing uh, to the party uh, by way of your application? I mean that because I've been hearing so many different rationales. Uh, I did this, uh, we, we did this, uh, we have benefited the party in this way. Um, do you think you might be a bit thin on the ground there or not? Okay. Um, yeah. Did you hear me? Did you hear the question? No, I didn't hear all the question. Okay. Uh, what, what I was saying essentially is that maybe you'd like to share with us, you being a new senator and you're aspiring for the top job in the Senate, um, uh, what it is that um, you, you, you would be bringing, as it were, to it? Because everybody is sort of saying, this is my contribution, I deserve this. Now, you are um, you are an, admi uh, an administrator par excellence. You know, there's no doubt about that. Um, so there's no, there's no matter of competency. But I imagine it's going to be a bit more than that. Or what do you think? Especially, look at the case where you are from the southeast, one of the six uh, geopolitical zones that are interested in it. What, what, did, what would you think would, uh, you would be bringing to the table that would sort of make your case, as it were, quite buoyant? Well, you know, you have asked two questions, but you are omitting one. One is, um, you know, the stake. What have we brought to the table? And then, as uh, the president of Senate, what one is, you know, is going to be bringing to the table? You know, first and foremost, um, you have to understand uh, this journey, uh, the success of APC to, uh, uh, in the national uh, election. And uh, I can give you the stages of uh, what happened, the way God had you know, outlined it. And I believe strongly that the president-elect and uh, the leadership of our party will not neglect this. First, the three uh, governors moved. You know, I started the movement. I became from PDP to APC, followed by you know, Governor Yade and followed by the, the governor, Matalawe, the governor of Zambara State. So these three you know, key uh, governors that moved uh, provided a very strong, you know, um, background for uh, APC. Uh, APC became stronger. Uh, APC increased in the number of uh, the House of Assembly members and uh, National Assembly members and also the number of governors. So that is step one, and I think is the doing of God. And don't forget that uh, when uh, APC defeated the uh, PDP, there was uh, such a movement, you know, which helped, uh, you know, APC. Now this movement, you know, very strong, and uh, it is very key in the success of APC. And of course, we faced a lot of uh, persecutions uh, all over, you know, from all corners, but we stood our ground. Then the, the second one is uh, the G5 uh, governors. Uh, and then the G5 governors, uh, you know, stood, you know, uh, their ground, uh, supporting that power should move from, uh, you know, north to south for equitable Nigeria and uh, for peace and unity. And that also helped. And in particular is Governor Wike. And so this uh, assistance and uh, this leadership of G5 must not be neglected. And then during the election, the number of people that are also in support uh, that the power should move to south, uh, like Governor, former Governor Fawish. Um, we're, we're having network challenges, but uh, Governor Mahi will. And so talking about what one is bringing or what one has brought to the table, I've also made a bony state, which was a hitter to uh, the uh, PDP uh, a stronghold. Uh, it's now APC stronghold. I brought the three senators, you know, to APC. I brought uh, over 21 of uh, the House of Assembly members out of 24. I brought uh, three uh, National Assembly out of, uh, uh, that's the uh, House of Rep, out of six. 
uh, we're still going to take the other three in the tribunal because uh, it was obvious uh, manipulation. And so I have a lot in terms of what I brought to the table of APC as regards the success of APC in the general elections. Mm. So I'm duly qualified. I have a stake uh, because I took the greatest risk in leaving PDP to uh, APC. I also stood my ground, you know, whether through all challenges and then, you know, God saw me through. And uh, I always quote the face I profess uh, when God uh, the, the, the was leading the children of Israel to the promised land. Joshua and Caleb were sent to go and spy the land. And then other people were sent along with them. So they made, you know, good reports, the Caleb and Joshua. So they don't be giants in the land. We're able to take it. And the, the other people say that, you know, were like grasshoppers. So they were afraid. They made an evil report. When it was time to share the land, Joshua and Caleb, they had a stake. And also, uh, 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 so it's the same thing like what we are talking now. What have we brought to the table? So we have a stake, you know, uh, in a Bonnie state. I have a stake as the senator elect, as the governor of the state, to ask for this position. Indeed. That is number one. Number two, uh, APC was never uh, very much the dominant party in Southeast. We made APC the dominant party in Southeast. Out of the uh, uh, the, 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 the five, uh, you know, governors, two are APC, one Labour, one uh, PDP, one APGA. So we are the majority party in Southeast now. And for me, it's a miracle. And for me, it is bringing something to the table. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we have a lot Indeed. we are brought to the table. Um, and then what am I going to do? Yeah. So please, what am I going to do for the, yeah, please for the 10 Senate? Yeah. The Thai Senate, uh, you see, when you talk about ranking, ranking is talking about experience. Party chairman for five years, deputy governor for four years, under a very distinguished uh, uh, disciplinarian and uh, uh, tactician and strategist, Chief Martin Elechi, the governor of the state, the immediate past governor of the state, and then being a governor for almost eight years. The experience is there. And you can come to Ebony and see what one has done in Ebony State. I've also brought the governor, you know, elect under APC. And so there is, you know, continuity. And the, you will find out what we have done in Ebony State. And you can't do all these things without understanding the, uh, uh, the, 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 the nature of the people. Uh, so I can, in summary, say that uh, through the special grace of God that I'm an administrator, Mm -hmm. And I'm a team player. I've stood for the unity of the country. I've uh, stood against uh, the issue of, uh, you know, separation and agitation, you know, by, you know, my brothers, I pop. I stood against them. I feel that uh, the South is stronger under equitable Nigeria. And this is what I've stood for. And I have great respect among leaders of South East. I do have great respect. They have respect for me, for my honesty for my forthrightness, for my hard work, for my commitment, for the experience, for the wisdom and the grace of God. Indeed. Thank you very much. And um, as you know, you are not the only senator from the Southeast uh, that is vying for the top job in the Senate. Um, how would you sort of explain or comment upon the fact that um, you are one of the surprising people that lost the presidential election. So did the president. So did the president-elect, you know, uh, lose the presidential election uh, in their states, in their states of origin. Um, what do you think was going on there? What, what were the people saying? Well, in all honesty, I'm, uh, you know, as surprised as, uh, you know, probably you're surprised because I never gave uh, any foothold, you know, to... Labour Party because of what we have done in a bunny state. Um, we're still having challenges, uh, viewers. Uh, the Muslim have... ticket. Okay. Uh, 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 Governor, your, 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 yeah. your audio drifted out. So could you go back to the beginning of that answer uh, about the surprise? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, I'm so surprised that uh, Labour Party could have any uh, foothold during the uh, presidential election. Because we have worked so hard for the people, 
and uh, we command the love and loyalty of our people, the people of Ebony State, and they have always believed us. And so uh, the, 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 the issue is that, you know, of course, Ebony State is a Christian state, and the, the issue of Muslim, Muslim ticket, we didn't know it was that very serious among, you know, our people, especially the people of Southeast. And uh, they didn't warn us, and I think it was out of respect yeah, that we were talking to them and they were accepting. But I think in their mind, you know, they needed, uh, you know, to vote for somebody, you know, who is a Christian. And I always say to uh, my brothers, you know, let the uh, measure of success for the Labour Party not be taken uh, for, uh, you know, personal, you know, effort. It was a protest vote, you know, a go against the perceived uh, Muslim Muslim ticket and a protest vote against uh, the uh, PDP because the Southeast, we've labored so much for PDP, and that's the reason I left PDP, and there was no reward. And I knew they were going to betray PDP, which they eventually did. So this were the protest vote going on in Southeast. Uh, but God saw us through because God also, uh, you know, sees the heart of men, and uh, we were able to get some votes for uh, President uh, Ahmed, you know, Asuwaju. Uh, uh, so that is the, the major reason. So it was not a vote per se for because they like uh, Labour Party. It's no. It's for me a protest vote. And that's why in subsequent elections, you know, we uh, got everything. You know, I, I'm, I'm happy that you're with us because you can comment on some of the arguments that we are seeing out there by knowledgeable people in the field. Um, in the South, we got the Southwest, we got the South South, we got the Southeast. Now, when the Southwest is out of it, um, the Southeast that you represent, but not uh, solely, uh, you also have other brothers uh, representing the Southeast in the Senate. Um, the question of, I don't know what your comment would be that, wait a minute, the Southeast has produced eminent Senate presidents uh, in the past. The South South has been, in this regard, must, in the Sahara yeah. Desert. Nothing, nothing has been shaking. And so uh, the, the, those who are favoring the South-South would say, shouldn't it be time? Those who are favoring the Southeast are saying that there's a, there's a strategic aspect to all of this. One, if you're going to assuage some hurt feelings, you might want to go to the Southeast. Uh, but the gentlemen, uh, well, the, the, the party men who are with the president-elect trying to determine those things, they will come up with an answer about Maybe I could get your quick reaction to between the South South and the South East. Um, the South East is experienced at being Senate president. The South South hasn't had a chance before. What would you say to that? Well, it, it, you see, the South East for me, uh, you know, I have respect for South East the same way I have respect for South South because, um, you know, uh, even those who are contesting from uh, South South that I know, uh, Senator Fabio, is my very good friends, and uh, uh, um, I've known him for a very long time. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, Comrade Adam Oshima. So these are good people. Uh, in the Southeast, uh, I also have uh, Senator Jose Carlo, you know, Senator Izuna. So these are wonderful, good people. But let us be a bit objective. Our country has been badly so divided. During the national election, the middle belt, the Afeni Ferry, some, some of them, you know, they, they felt that the two sections of this country, the two regions that have never had, you know, a presidency of this country, they are Southeast and the Northeast. And they, they felt that there is a need to allow, you know, the Southeast to have a stake in the presidency. Of course, uh, uh, I supported that. That's why I contested for the, uh, the, the, the candidacy of our party, the APC. And that's why I also left uh, PDP because I felt that PDP, uh, having been supported so much by the Southeast, that it was time for them to also consider Southeast, you know, for their uh, candidacy. And then uh, that didn't happen. And of course, Aswaji came. If we understand life, we should understand that we are on our destinies. We understand that no man speak it unless God has spoken. If we understand life, we, we understand that, you know, they, it is God's will. And so when uh, Ahmed Asuaju emerged, we have to support him. 
even against, you know, our people's interest, you know, some of them, not all of them, you know, to saying that uh, Luko, uh, Muslim, Muslim ticket. I didn't see uh, Asiwaju or uh, Shetima as people that are ruled by, you know, uh, religion. They have their own faith, but they don't bring it to intimidate anybody. And so for me, it was a known issue. We have a job to be done. And that's why we felt that Asiwaju Ahmed and Shetima, they can do the job. Okay. And that's why we supported them. Okay. But that doesn't remove the perception of the issue of marginalization okay. of Southeast. So in this case, Ahmed uh, uh, Bola Tinibu, a good man, a man that you know hunts for talent irrespective of where you came from, and we use them. And this is what I told international community you know, when they interviewed me before the election, I said the best is that this man is very intelligent, is very courageous, and he hunts for talents, you know, and he uses talents, you know, to achieve results. And so I believe strongly that the perception of South is still not, uh, you know, uh, as you know, assuaged, it's not, uh, you know, addressed. And I think that if number three position is given to South East, it will allow for inclusiveness. It, I'm not saying it must be me. I have not said Zoni to me. No, anyone that is better than me and whom God has called in Southeast could take the position. Okay. There is no saint here. There is nobody who is uh, an arm robber. There is nobody who is a saint. You know, so far you put on this flesh. So this issue of uh, credibility is there, but it has to do with, you know, people's perception in choosing whomever they want. Okay. Um... Uh, Mr. Governor, I think the audio has gone out again. Um, I'll just sort of wait for it to come back uh, because um, this is quite interesting. The if God says it's me, there is no power that can stop it. Because when God, just like God spoke about Amit, we had challenges. You know, only those who have the descending of the spirit knew that God has spoken concerning him. But many people did not give him chance. But because it's the will of God, he yes. emerged against all permutations and obstacles and challenges. And I feel that my case will be as such, and I put my confidence in God. Mm. Well, and, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm delighted because you, you hear things and uh, you don't really have perspective, but you've said more than once here that it's not a do-or-die affair for you, even though you are very, very serious. Uh, it, everything depends on the will of God, and you've also uh, put some uh, perspectives uh, to, to that position. Uh, so thank you very much for that, because if one didn't hear from you, uh, one might not get the clearest picture of that. Whereas you fully intent, uh, intent and are very serious in this, uh, uh, in this pursuit, it still isn't a do or die affair, which is a very sportsman-like uh, uh, thing uh, to, to, to but, but, but let me Let me advise here yes. uh, that one of the things that almost turned our party PC and would have affected our chances, and of course it did affect to a large extent, you know, our chances in the national election is the issue of encouraging everyone to be fine. The leadership of the party and the, 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 the president-elect and the, the, uh, the vice president-elect, and of course the outgoing president, they should meet quickly. And the question should be uppermost in their heart. Uh, number one is the unity of the country. Number two is the face of the administration. Number three is the inclusiveness. Everybody should be carried along so that we can build a united Nigeria. These are key issues. And so decisions should be taken. I don't think that any of us, uh, if God says no to any of us, that we, you know, uh, be against the decisions because the heart of the kings are the palm of the Lord. It's the Lord who we impute in the hearts of these leaders whom God has chosen to lead the Ten Senate. And so that decision should be taken very quickly. So that people don't spend their money, people don't, uh, you know, labor so much. And at the end of the day, there is no free context. You will still have to say, okay, for to manage the affairs of the country, to manage the affairs of uh, the party, this should be. That decision has to happen very, very quickly. And everyone find must be called to this decision making. Uh, that is my feeling. Okay. Uh, we shouldn't allow people to spend their money so much lobby so much and the promises are made and are not kept, it will not be good for the next administration. The next administration is an administration that God has put together to rebuild the country. 
is the administration that God has put together to you know, expose the greatness of this country and the riches of the country and to leave the pop and the widows. And this is, should be the face of the administration. So, and that exactly is what is going on now. At the top of the program, uh, the, uh, the news is reporting that um, there's a meeting at uh, the president-elect's uh, Asokoro Abuja home. Uh, there was this meeting with all big wigs involved. And this was, in fact, I had, I had thought that you might have been at that meeting uh, because even elected officials uh, who, stakeholders, were at that meeting. But if you weren't there, being a politician, you would have had your people who had your voice or the other way around. Well, would they, have been they, there. They, the truth remains that nobody invited us for a meeting. If there is going to be such a meeting, they, then uh, we should be formally invited. But I think that people went to greet the president-elect and it was taken for a meeting. Okay. Uh, because there is so much speculation in this country. If there will be uh, such a decision, uh, I don't think every Dikahari will be there. First, there will be a uh, meeting uh, and consultation between the uh, president-elect, the vice president-elect, and of course the leadership of the party, and probably they will have to consult President Buhari. And after they have done that, they may have the options, and then they will now invite uh, those who are buying and begin to narrow down the, the, the options. Uh, that's, I think that is what you know, should happen. Uh, so I'm here in Ebony. I'm still working. Tomorrow I'm going to be doing a test flight on one of our best airports in this country. Indeed. And that is what uh, I'm doing right now. Okay. In indeed, that is where I wanted to go. I wanted to go there because you're still fully in charge uh, in Ebony. Uh, so, uh, when I, I take but before you depart, that, let me uh, also advise that all those who we uh, take this decision should free their minds, you know, about Southeast. Southeast is an important part of this country. Nobody should be afraid of Southeast. If Southeast people, uh, you know, they, 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 they stake their lives, they stake their reputation, you know, their integrity to stand for APC. And so, at a time of decision, what should be uppermost is not the number of votes that were you know, brought to APC, but we also did bring you know, votes to APC. But let us address whatever is the perceived injustice and then relaunch you know, Southeast in the mainstream of the society of Nigeria. And uh, it is also very important that in taking these decisions that no one is going to exclude any zone. Let us be very fair. God okay. is a fair God. Mm. And when we do that, I believe strongly that even the issue of agitation, which we promised while we were campaigning, that the APC will take care of Southeast and that we want to remain in a federating Nigeria because we are stronger and better. And let nobody think that one region is not important in this country, any region at all the chain as strong as the weakest link. Okay. If a region is neglected and agitation continues, you may have won the election, you may want to lead, but you need peace to lead. And to lead in peace, you need equity, fairness, and justice. Indeed. So I believe that this fair God that brought us fairly to leadership will lead the hearts of our leaders so that decision taken, all the regions of this country will be carried along. And we rebuild, you know, the Nigeria society. We rebuild our regions. We rebuild ourselves. And then we bring out the best. Okay. This is a very, very great country. Indeed. The resources of this country are so enormous if we can all come together and put Nigeria first. That's what I want to say about that. As all you right, right then. To okay, Senator. You, uh, you know, we, we, I'm going to take a break now, a very short break. We'll be right back and um, we can continue on that theme. But I also wanted to touch on some of the things you just mentioned because, um, as I said, you're a hands-on governor still. It looks like you're going to be working until the very, very last day. So we look at some of those infrastructural <laughs> deliveries. <laughs>